Again, I want to welcome you to a virtual Sunday School study which is presented by New Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church, Christians Under Construction, where Rev. Brandon Blake is our pastor, Rev. Ivan Carter is our assistant pastor and superintendent of Christians Under Construction. And while I'm introducing the lesson, do me a favor get your Bible and our lesson today is will be coming from the book of Luke we'll be dealing with chapter 24 our verses for study are verses 17 through 27 as well as verses 30 through 35 again that's Luke chapter 24 verses 17 through 27 as well as verses 30 through 35. My name is Priscilla Smith. I am the superintendent of Christians Under Construction, as well as one of the facilitators of the adult class number two. Our subject this week is Jesus Encounters Two Disciples. The session in a sentence today uh, says, when Jesus encountered the two disciples on the Emmaus Road, he revealed to them that all of Scripture is about him, and the passion this news stirred within them prompted them to action, telling others they had met the resurrected Savior. Let us pray. This morning, our Heavenly Father, it's again that we come humbled in our spirits, Lord, because you allow us to worship, praise, and serve you. You allow us to come to you in prayer. You allow us to be your children, and you comfort, keep us, and guide us. We thank you, God, for being our Savior. We thank you for being our keeper. We thank you for continuous blessings. Thank you for raining down your grace and mercy upon us. We pray your continued blessings upon the New Sunny Mount congregation. Thank you for Pastor Brandon Blake, our leader, our guide, even in these times of pandemic situations. We pray your continued blessings upon our sick and shut in. We pray your covering of those who've lost loved ones. I ask that you guide me as I present this lesson today. I pray that something will be said in our session today that will enable someone to take what's said and use it in their daily lives. I pray your continued blessings upon our country, upon our city. Pray your bringing together of people and minds so that we can be united in serving you, but also in going about our daily lives. Thank you, God, for your many blessings. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for loving us. This is my prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Okay. Have you had a chance to get your Bibles and go to Luke chapter 24? And we'll begin our lesson study with verse 17. And we'll go through verse 27. Also, we'll do verses 30 through 35. Again, our subject this week is Jesus Encounters Two Disciples. The previous uh, session uh, from last week in our study group closed with the empty tomb on what we proclaim as Easter morning. John believed but did not yet fully understand all that occurred. 
in this session today, we will see that Jesus approached two disciples along the road to Emmaus. Their hearts burned within them as he spoke, yet they didn't even recognize Jesus. Through this encounter, Jesus taught the disciples how to read the Old Testament with him as the focus confronted the disciples discouragement with the truth of his resurrection and moved them to action jesus is the word made flesh he wasn't giving only these disciples a pattern for rightly reading god's word but also setting it forth for us today there are three session outlines that we'll be dealing with today. The first one is the risen Savior confronts discouragement and confusion. The second session outline is the risen Savior reveals he is the focus of all the scriptures. And the third and final outline is the risen Savior affections and motivates action. Our first session will be taken from Luke 24, 17 through 24. Read along with me, please. Then he asked them, what is this dispute that you're having with each other as you are walking? And they stopped walking and looked discouraged. The one named Cleophas answered him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that happen there in these days? What things, he asked them. So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, powerful in action and speech, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we were hoping that he was the one who was about to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it's the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women from our group astounded us. They arrived early at the tomb, and when they didn't find his body, they came and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see him. The point one is the risen Savior confronts discouragement and confusion. From this scripture, the two disciples were discussing Jesus, arresting the crucifixion, and two events that crushed their hopes were to be the one to redeem Israel. Furthermore, they had heard confusing tales of angels, an empty tomb, and Jesus being alive. They knew some details but they didn't fully understand all that happened concerning Jesus. What should have thrilled their hearts only caused a disagreement and discouragement. They knew some prophecies about the Messiah, at least that he was supposed to bring deliverance. They expected Jesus to be the ruling king who would deliver his people from the oppressive rule of other nations. This Jesus will do one day, but God had other plans to be accomplished by their Messiah first. Delivering of God's people from the tyranny of sin and death through Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. Walking among them without their knowledge, the risen Messiah embodied the hope of all their expectations being met, even the ones that they didn't know they needed to have. 
the first expectation we should have of the Messiah is our salvation from sin and death, without which we cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus is the first fruits of the final resurrection, the turning point of new creation life. Our hope for salvation is secure in him, knowing we too will be raised. This is our hope and our joy in the midst of despair. A hope is not in ourselves or in one another. It's not in our circumstances or, or our goals. Our hope, our only hope, rests on Jesus, secure in his resurrection. The two disciples felt anything but peace as Jesus joined them on the road. In their understanding of the scriptures, the Messiah was supposed to reign, not die. He was to be king, not crucified as a criminal. But just as their eyes had not yet been opened to see Jesus' true identity, their minds and hearts had not yet been open to understand and believe the myth of Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection. God is not a God of confusion but of peace. Desiring that we know, trust him as the Holy Spirit opens our eyes to understand in scripture and Jesus' life, death, resurrection and ascension, we grow in our knowledge of and trust in Jesus. He is our peace. The conversation of these two indicates their deep interest, concern in the knowledge of things pertaining to Jesus and the fact of their not recognizing Christ indicates that Jesus did not intend to, for them to recognize him. One of the mysterious qualities of the resurrection body of our Lord was this quality of remaining unrecognized until it was fully intended by the Lord. The second uh, point of our lesson today, the, the risen Savior reveals he is the focus of all the scripture. This will be coming from chapter 24 of Luke verses 25 and 27. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Wasn't it necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself in all the scripture. The risen Savior reveals he is the focus of all the scriptures. Jesus, still veiled from their eyes, taught the two disciples that all of God's word points to him. For example, the Messiah is the better Moses who leads his people out of the eternal bondage of sin and exile from God's presence. He has reconciled us to the Father through his atoning death and glorious resurrection. The promised Messiah is the one the prophets taught when ushered in the new covenant, which promised everlasting forgiveness of sin and new hearts. The covenant was sealed with Jesus' blood shed on the cross. Our good came from his suffering and his resurrection confirms all of God's word is true. What are some ways you've seen Jesus as a fulfillment of Old Testament scriptures? Something for you to think about 
as you study on what we've talked about in this lesson. These crucial verses help us understand the message of the whole Bible. We learn that the whole of Scripture points ultimately to Jesus and Jesus only. Holy Scriptures is the Word of God, the record of God speaking. The Word, Jesus Christ, Jesus Himself, provides the way of reading the scripture for those early disciples and we like them are meant to learn the same way of reading God's word. Clarity of scripture. God's word was written in a way that can be understood with the help of the Holy Spirit. Believing the scriptures are clear does not mean that every part is equally easy to interpret. Neither does it mean we will never make mistakes in our interpretation. It does, not, it does mean that with God's help, people are capable of understanding the biblical text for themselves as they employ correct methods of interpretation. Because God gave us his word as authoritative in all matters related to life and faith, we believe his word was written in a way that can be understood with the help of the Holy Spirit. Believing the scriptures are clear does not mean that every part is equally easy to be interpreted. Part three of our lesson today, the risen Savior stirs affections and motivates action. This part we skip over to Luke 24 verses 30 through 35. It was as he reclined at the table with them that he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, weren't our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road and explaining the scriptures to us? That very hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those with them gathered together who said, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then they began to describe what had happened on the road and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. After the Bible lesson, the disciples invited their guests to stay the night with them at the evening meal. Jesus took the lead. When he took the bread and broke it, the disciples' eyes were fully open. Though Jesus' interpretation of the scriptures and his actions was reminiscent of the Lord's Supper, the disciples saw for the first time their risen Savior, who had given his body to be broken for the salvation of sinners. The Savior, who had done no wrong, allowed his hands, feet, and brow to be pierced as he died a criminal death to atone for our sin. These disciples were rocked to their core and discouraged by Jesus' crucifixion. But this encounter with their risen Savior, seeing him truly only in the breaking of the bread, revealed that he could only know, that we could only know Jesus, is true, Jesus truly through his suffering and through the crucifixion. According to the scriptures, he came to die, be buried, and to rise again. How could we not love the one who has purchased us with his blood 
so that we might dwell with him forever. After Jesus disappeared, the disciples' first commented, comment was about his teaching of the scriptures. Their hearts had burned with excitement at what they had learned when they began to tell others about their experience. God's word is alive and active. And as we spend time with our risen Savior in his word, our hearts will burn to carry his gospel to others. The gospel is an event that took place at a specific point in history. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ for the redemption of the sinners. The gospel is also the story of redemption that God has planned since before the foundations of the world, which runs through scripture. The event and story do not exist apart from or in conflict with one another but together inspire us to a life of devotion and mission. What are some actions the resurrection of Jesus should inspire in the life of believers? We know that God came to save us from our sins. We know that because of him, we will be able, as we live our lives, to do his will, to walk in his way. And the ultimate gift of eternal life will be ours as we worship, praise, and serve Jesus the Christ. Because we have been forgiven of our sin through Jesus, the word of God, we read and interpret the scriptures in light of Christ's death and resurrection and out of grateful hearts we join with Christ on a mission. Since Jesus has been raised from the dead, how will you respond in faith? What are some ways as a group of disciples of Christ and believers we can better encourage others about the way of one another through the truth of the scripture. Finally, what action will you take during the coming weeks to love others well out of the overflow of your love for Jesus Christ? I would like to encourage you to take the blessing that God has given us through his death, burial, and resurrection. Share it with somebody. Remind them that Jesus died for us not because of our goodness, but because he loved us so much that he wanted to be able to offer grace, mercy, he wanted to be able to keep us from dying and going to hell. God has given us his word, displayed his character through the word, made flesh. And what does he ask of us? Only to believe. Only to keep the faith in him. Gazing upon Jesus move the disciples to proclaim what they saw and heard to others. Fixing our eyes on Jesus will hopefully move us to action. Thank you very much for joining me this day in a study of the Word. Jesus' encounter with the two disciples led to a revelation revelation and it led to the opening of the eyes of those disciples so that they could go and tell others. I pray that your visit with me today has led to the opening of your eyes so that you can share the good news with 
others the good news about Jesus Christ. The good news that he died for our sins to save us and to offer us eternal life. Thank you for joining me this morning. I pray you have a wonderful week and I pray that you will join us next week here on Christians Under Construction presented by the New Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church. Again, I'm Priscilla Smith. Thank you again for being a part of our study in the Word. God bless you and have a wonderful week in Jesus Christ.